Welcome back to the final Friday of the month. The final Friday, which is hopefully the last Friday of the... The House of Pain. Exactly. Because, oh man, some things have gotten a little cheaper throughout the day. Not only have some things gotten cheaper throughout the day, but... Actually, some things have kind of recovered a little bit. Let's take a look at what's happening at the sticks. We've got about 14 minutes to go before the market closes. Let's take a look at what's going on here. So we've got, ooh, cost down 18%. FUBU's down 13, 15% here. Express down 8%. Hydro Farm, wow, under 60 as a potential MJ play there. We've got uh, Sundial, definitely an MJ play. Uh, bizarro charts here, uh, down about 7.38%. We are on the one minute chart here. Neo down at 3531, trying to really recover here on the day uh, with my Weeble. Yeah, I got a higher uh, purchase uh, uh, here on Neo. Jeez, you thought 48 was a good deal back then. It's 35 now. <laughs> uh, probably my average cost basis for Neo, I would guess probably somewhere around ah, at this point, it's probably somewhere like 33. I keep I keep averaging up, <laughs> which I do because uh, when I have conviction of stocks, I don't care if I'm averaging up. I average up. Because I got to put more money to work. So what else do we have here? Uh, Luminar. We, so we get the uh, Microvision and Luminar. So LiDAR stocks showing a little bit of pain. Look at Tesla today. 4.4% down. This thing hit a low of, uh, what is this here? Five five ninety nine ninety. This thing hits a low. Nice. Uh, that puts us right around, let's see here. Uh, it said, right now it's at, 611 right now it's been bouncing around 606 599 yikes we got og is down also 4.5 percent tilray is down 4.3 percent which by the way if you're curious about tesla make sure to watch the video i posted about tesla about an hour ago really really bullish insights for tesla make me very very excited for tesla uh lots of pain over here uh food companies going down pens going down lemonade's going to Lemonade's going to be under 85 here soon. We keep going. C3AI down 4%. Yikes. We've got uh, Clover Health is down. Matterport down 2.3%. Uh, cannabis ETF. It's uh, still 14. Cannabis ETF down. Airbnb's down today. It's down in the 173 range. Not bad. Uh, Xbing's even down today, but only about a percent, along with Disney at 184 Woo, look at Palantir, though. Oh, my goodness. Now, most of my Palantir shares are sitting at Robinhood, but this one, woo, at 22 bucks, man, I could average down on Palantir at 22. That's an average down for me. Uh, such a great freaking company. Really, all these, these, ta oh, thanks, John Doe, helping me average down on Palantir, man. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, all of the just any anything is just selling off right now. That's certainly that's higher, higher multiple. Uh, but look at Upstart coming out of nowhere again to rally after that massive crash yesterday. Uh, or sorry, it wasn't it wasn't yesterday. No, 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 it was last week. Where was it? Hold on, let's figure it out exactly. It had like a thirty percent sell off there for a period of time, uh, and that was uh, that was really only over here. Okay, yeah, 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 there we go. So we sold off intraday, sold off more the next couple days. We went down to a low of a 105, uh, which I had mentioned I'd be interested in this company again, maybe at like under 100, like 90 or something like that. Got to 105, never went back down. Instead, uh, now it's up over 100. Uh, it's around $143 right now per share. Absolutely incredible. Uh, Ubiquity is up 13%. Big green candlestick today on Ubiquity. Uh, this morning in the live stream, they were not up this much when we were talking about it. We got restoration hardware up 8.1, uh, 8.8%, rather. Snowflake up 6%. Uh, Rocket Mortgage coming out of the woodworks here, but still under $24 a share. EXP Real Estate, if you have not yet seen, I did just uh, I, I just did an interview uh, with the CEO of EXP Real Estate. Not, not just one of the uh, OG employees or agents there, but rather the actual CEO. Just super exciting. Encourage you to check it out. I'm bullish on the stock. And I think when you watch uh, the video, you'll understand, or at least the interview, you'll understand a little bit more about their mission. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, yep, there we go. Just making sure it's live right now. So it is. So uh, <laughs> very. he's very bullish on the company. Let's just put it that way. Uh, okay, so what else do we have here? Oh, what's pushing here? Oh, EXP is now green candlesticky. 
So, uh, okay, what, what else is going on? We've got uh, Target, uh, Target, wow, Roblox. What do you turn on Roblox? Roblox, just, uh, just this morning, was way lower. It was like 66 or 65 or something like that. Where were we? Yeah, just this morning. Yeah, see, 65.9, 65.7. Let's zoom out on the minute chart here. Wow, what a day. Hold on a second here. Yeah, this is all today. That's crazy. What a what a chart right here for uh, for um, Roblox here, just jumping like crazy, uh, right around two thirty ish. Who knows? Maybe, maybe this is Ark Invest coming in, going shopping again, doubling down on their position here. We've got a Snowflake. Look at that Snowflake. Snowflake has been pretty oversold for a while, and it's nice to see some of the tech come back and get a boost back. Uh, Unity's even coming back here uh, earlier in the day what probably an hour two hours ago we had a lot more pain bitcoin's almost at fifty four thousand over here peloton at 106 also green etsy's green 200 even so we've got a mixed set of green coming back here this is good that's that's bullish we want to see it, like square going green again we want to see uber or not uber um ubiquity and unify and uh peloton and exbi you know with some of these that have been have been pretty downtrodden and sold off. We want to see these guys come back, uh, like API. Let's see what API is doing today. API today down another four percent. Look at that dip that it had today here. Ouch! I bought I bought this uh, once on once on Weeble. Yeah, for seventy two bucks. I got spanked on that one, uh, but uh, that's okay. I, I did add to Robinhood recently on uh, on API, so averaging that down. Basically, any purchase from like the last three months is upside down. And this Weeble brokerage account here, I've only had it open since uh, December, late November, early December, something like that. So most of the purchases in my Weeble are like, oh man, those are those are red, but that's okay. Uh, you know, not looking at it this short term, looking at especially these long plays. Like I can't help myself but buy Neo at, at these levels. Like I just love it or CCIV, You'd love it, just love it. Uh, they're cheap. But uh, you know that doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna see uh, big uh, big swings anytime soon. A lot, lot of people talking talking smack over the tech stocks and the uh, versus the recovery stocks. That oh no, it's don't worry, it's not just short term. It's here to stay. No, yeah, we'll see. We shall see. I will continue to buy when I have dollar hollas, and I will buy my favorite stocks. Which today, by the way, I uh, added five hundred thousand dollars to one particular stock. Talked about that in the uh, course this morning. We kind of did like a conviction analysis on it. It was fun. Uh, I enjoyed doing that. Uh, you know, putting putting together a re good report and the chatting about it. So, uh, what else do we have here? PayPal, Dave and Buster's, Nokia, Gap, Square. Uh, but yeah, take advantage of that coupon code. It does expire tonight. And then finally, I can stop talking about it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what's Enphase doing here? So Enphase, DoorDash, Enphase right here. 1.4%. So that's green. It was red on the day, though. Very tough mix mix today. Really, really, really tough mix here. Uh, Salesforce is almost like it's heading under 200. Uh, it almost hit uh, 205 there for a moment. <whistles> okay. I want to listen to this for a moment because they're talking about SoFi. You probably have all seen bond yields never go precisely where you think they're going to go. I might take the over uh, on that 230, 240. Let's not forget, we're only two years removed from the 10-year yield at three and a quarter in October of 18. I think what was interesting was when bond yields were going up in the fourth quarter of 18, defensives were actually leading. That was the market saying, whoa, 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 yields have gone up too far here. It's time to get defensive. We really haven't seen that yet. I think as long as mm. the leadership framework of this market stays pretty cyclical, I'm okay with bond yields drifting towards 2%. Let's quickly check markets with five minutes left. Uh, session highs, 340 now on the Dow, over 1% uh, for the Dow, 1.3 <laughs> for the S&P, the Nasdaq's up 0 0.8. And uh, in fact, almost all of the sectors are higher, 10 out of 11 now, just communication services lower. Tesla rival Neo is the latest automaker to suspend production due to the global chip shortage. The company also cutting first quarter delivery forecast to around 19,500 vehicles versus the 20,000 to 20,500 previously expected. Neo shares down 5% or so uh, today. Sylvia. Um, yeah, Neo, by the way, another one that I added to today. Not my big 500K buy today, but did add uh, to Neo today, added uh, to it. Uh, it. The high conviction stock was not uh, Tesla, but uh, yeah, I see what you did there, although I did add a chunk.
uh, to Tesla. Let's see. Please update us with your thoughts on the 10 year to 2%. Uh, yeah, uh, to me, it's all, and I've talked about this regularly uh, on the channel here. To me, the big concern with the movement in the 10 year isn't that it's going up. I don't, it's been going up consistently for about like eight months now. It's not a big deal. I don't really care that the bond yields are going up. It, there will come a time where we just don't, the entire market doesn't care anymore. What What's freaking people out is, is how fast it's gone up. So the rate of change of velocity is acceleration. So the acceleration at which it's gone up, that's that's the shocker. So think of the easiest way to picture that is literally like being in a car. If you're going 65 miles an hour, you don't really feel like you're going fast. And if you've got, you know, somebody who accelerates from like 65 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour, and you're kind of like on your phone in the back, you don't really notice like you don't really care that you're going 65 versus 80 miles an hour. You don't care. That doesn't matter so much. Now, if you're going 65 miles an hour and you're, you know, in a P100 Tesla, uh, you know, the, the fastest one they got on, on a Model X, let's say, or whatever, and somebody slams on the gas while you're going 55 and the car jolts you back, that's kind of what happened to the bond market. Uh, and, and it's it's that jolt where everybody's like, oh, reposition, reposition. Uh, and, and then you get everybody repositioning. And, and, and then it's like, oh, oh, man, you hit the brakes again. Uh, cop. Oh, go fast again. <laughs> you know, and so it's, it's that insanity that is why we're seeing all of these fluctuations. And there was a comment here. Oh, I think I actually right here. Uh, I, th I think this is a very valid comment. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, you know, and look, I, I, this is not to bag on anybody playing recovery. Like, hey, you guys are making great money. Good for you. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, long term, I think this is a very valid comment. Uh, I don't understand moving to recovery. Most are deeply in debt and belong to industries that are slowly getting phased out. Why would you board a sinking ship? The problem that happens is fund managers see that recovery is doing better. Retail investors who are invested with funds uh, or even other institutions demand that their fund managers take advantage or be a part of the recovery plays. So they trade over. Some of them trade really late and get burned. Uh, and then what ends up happening is when we rotate back to the tech and the quality and the long term growth, you know, that's that's when those prices get adjusted back down again. Does it make sense to me that Dave and Buster is a company that's like way more indebted? Uh, went to like 35. Yeah, totally makes sense that it went to 35. Absolutely makes sense. Does it make sense to me that with all of the new dilution that it's done, it's at $51, which is what the stock was trading for like back in 2018 and 19 before they did all these, these debt raises and, and new share issues makes no sense at all. Uh, and, and eventually those things will, will correct. I believe we'll see. We shall see. Uh, we will see. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's take a look at the closing bell here. And uh, but yeah, it's it's that those immediate shifts that freak the market out. Uh, and so keep that in mind that those shifts uh, just panic uh, people to reshuffle a little bit. We are the last Friday of the month here. Two and a half percent. Only one sector is low, and that's communication services, uh, down 0.3%. In fact, only two go. sectors are low for the week, communication services uh, and <laughs> consumer discretionary. So uh, nine of the 11 sectors dragged into the green uh, on this final session in that particular final hour of trade and the ramp into the close. Uh, S&P 500 up 1.7% at the close, Sarah. It's actually not a horrible closing. Some high drama there into the close. Big surge in the market. Hello. A very strong finish for the Bulls. Welcome back, everyone, to Closing Bell. I'm Sarah Eisen, along with Wilfred Frost. Take a look at how we finished up the day on Wall Street. Really a surge into the close there. The Dow closed up 452 points. The intraday chart tells the story. As you can see, we're, we're used to some big Yeah, news. I mean, honestly, we, we had a little bit of a run there into the close. Let's actually, let's go look at our sticks here and see what's going on. So uh, Dave and Buster surged a little bit of the close. Upstart. I mean, just all day long kind of moved uh, very now. Nah, I guess that's not necessarily true. It looks like uh, really just this last, what do we got here? From 4 to 255 to 4, really about the last hour here. Look at the volume that came into Upstart over here. 
big explosion here in volume compared to uh, the rest of the day if we zoom out here with the exception of a moment we had a bunch of selling pressure there but even that selling pressure didn't have as much volume as, as we had going into the close here uh, ubiquity uh, also a nice little run into the close there did have a sell-off briefly consolidation we got uh, kappa back up this thing was at like 10 bucks and you know not that long ago and so it doesn't doesn't surprise me that we'd see some of these SPACs come back, the ones that had sold off to basically their their par value essentially. Restoration hardware killing it. Snowflake coming back, really bullish indicator here for the tech sector. Uh, seeing seeing some enthusiasm come back to these uh, uh, these portfolio or these particular stocks or sectors. Rocket Mortgage, uh, pretty strong close there. Had a little bit of a red. EXPI up about five percent, uh, moving up further. We got uh, the Property Solutions uh, SPAC. This is Faraday Solutions up about 5%. Unity up about 4.9% on the day. Wayfair 4.5%. Nice big move on Wayfair today. Wow, we're at 343, like the company that made Halo. Or was that Bun? No, Bungie made the first few. 343 came later. I miss Bungie. Anyway, uh, where were we here? Target. Nice. Oh, Target rallying a little bit here in the after. No, not really. Looked like that was a green candlestick into the close. Maybe it was just a green candlestick off um, in the last final minute there. Sun Power, 4.17%. USO down. BYD, uh, well, USO is up 4.14%, but down in the after hours, but barely. Etsy, Etsy at 202. Peloton up 3%. Uh, and uh, in the after hours, roughly flat. Uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin's almost back to 54,000. A brief consolidation there on Bitcoin where I think briefly we went out, we went down to like 51.9 or something like that. It's a good little sell-off there. It's crazy, crazy little sell-off. Uh, and phase 152 bargain square 213 bargain also ran here uh, into the after hours and sold off a little bit uh, after uh, the market close. We've got Nokia 2%, Salesforce 1.7%, Purple, Zillow 1.8-ish. JP Morgan, 1.6. Delta, here are the airlines coming in at around 1.5% of an increase for the airlines today. AT&T, uh, over 30, but uh, certainly not over 31. Uh, FRX at 1022, bargain basement deal on that one. I mean, you're getting that one right next to par value uh, or, or SPAC value, I should say, what the pipe, what the pipe investors are paying. Uh, shift, about 850, very common position for this to remain in. Apple up about half percent. Shopify, yeah, Apple sticks around 120 as well. It's pretty incredible. Uh, okay, Palantir literally ended flat, and it's down about a third in the after hours. Macy's red, Redfin red by about a quarter of a percent. These folks here, Tootsie Roll. I don't just don't know why that one's on the list, but along with the Canopy ETF, uh, or sorry, Canopy Growth, the Cannabis EPA, uh, ETF, Aurora Cannabis. Lemonade, all these down about 1.3 to 1.7 percent. Twilio, Hylion, BFT merger, Canoe, all down a little over two percent. Tesla, we have Tesla here. Woo! Uh, Tesla here at 618, 618 for Tesla. Also, now down to about 616 here in the after hours. I have added to Tesla today. Uh, MP materials 345. Uh, in terms of a negative here, it's a reversal from yesterday. Churchill Capital at uh, somewhere, what are we at, 23? Yeah, roughly flat in the after hours. Neo, well, wow, uh, down 4% on the day, 4.77%, but actually down a little bit more in the after hours, down another percent in the after hours. The entire EV sector is just getting slammed. Uh, certainly not as hard as some of the momentum trades, which the momentum trades are always entertaining. But uh, wow, this is the... Last Friday of the month, uh, it is a quarter ending month, which uh, is always suspected at creating volatility for rebalancing. Now, uh, let's go take a quick peek over here. What are they talking about with the Russell small cap? A very challenging net interest margin environment. And so, yeah, to some extent, uh, I consider them value in that the earnings in the back half will drive uh, performance. Chris, can you explain why Discovery was down 30% this week, ViacomCBS down 27%. Yes, these stocks have had tremendous run-ups 
over the last, what, six months or so? But why yeah. all of a sudden is the air coming out? And, and why did it go it's in for that matter? Yeah, I mean, it feels like there's a little bit of a liquidation going on in some corners of the market. And I would expand just yeah. beyond those. Like, look at the move you saw in Chinese tech and some of the IPOs and some of the SPACs over the last week or two. It almost has that feel of a forced liquidation. When you look at the volume that was done on some of these stocks today, you're talking about record volume, record value traded. That actually perks up weenie babies some type of capitulative low with those type of names. And, you know, one other point is getting back to what Greg said about cyclicality. I do just want to be a little bit mindful that flows into cyclicality are about as aggressive as we've ever seen. So I yep. don't mind being part of the consensus. I just think we need to be aware when the market doesn't agree with the consensus. We're on guard for that. I don't think we're there yet. But the flows into cyclicals certainly reflect a lot of enthusiasm uh, around that trade. Sylvia, clearly, uh, tech, I mean, he's, he's right. The volumes going into these recovery stocks are just insane i mean these are these are crazy numbers going in uh it's incredible let's see what uh let's see what kudlow has got to say today. Side being inflicted by communist china oh my and God. if our companies follow this it's all to the good and if they condemn Wait. the chinese i'm sorry i thought that there was a border wall now on this whole topic i invite viewers to read my friend matt pottinger's op-ed it was just posted online at the wall street journal it's called beijing targets american business and my advice to american business is to just say no to china all right just say no and come back home to america and speaking of the corporate tax rate if mr biden raises our corporate tax rate from 21 to 28 percent well will be three percentage points higher than communist China. Think of that. And we need incentives to keep American companies right here at home. And we invite foreign companies to do likewise. President Biden should just quit messing with President Trump's success. All righty. Let's hop on over and see what Bloomberg's got to say. Bloomberg TV. South Africa were women's jobs. Uh, so I think we're in a moment of crisis. Uh, TV commercial. Uh, let's see what they've got coming up today. So uh, it is uh, four-ish. So let's see. What do you miss? Uh, no crazy interviews today. Sometimes you've got some really exciting interviews coming up. So no particularly uh, exciting interviews coming up. Not, not to say that some of these are not uh, exciting, but uh, we'll see. Then uh, what do we have on? So that's the schedule for, uh, for Bloomberg TV. This is – these are. The, let's pull up the after hours here. Let's see what we got. After hours today, let's see here. CRISPR is up. CRISPR was on its way to 100, folks. On its way down to 100. I was getting so excited because I wanted to open a position on this one. It got to 106 this morning. Uh, this, by the way, was one of the contenders for my uh, 500K buy today. And uh, yeah. I would have, let's see, our live stream started right around here. So it'd be interesting to see what I've gotten suckered into this dip. <laughs> uh, this was way past our private live stream. So probably would not have seen that during our private live stream. Okay, so uh, Etsy in the after hours actually falling under 200 here. Upward coming down a little bit as well. Dave and Buster's coming down 2%. Uh, lemonade, 86.5. Lemonade, whoo, still juicy, 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 juicy company. Uh, you should have got CRISPR. CRISPR is, it's, it's on the radar. I'm excited for that one, but, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if we get some more, we get some more selling off. Uh, maybe, maybe let's see what's going on over here. Um, this tweet, Sanders would rather talk in Alabama than act in Vermont. And in mm. response to Warren's tweet threatening to break up big tech. So, Quote, Amazon isn't powerful enough to heckle senators with snotty tweets. Amazon said, this is extraordinary and revealing. One of the most powerful mm -hmm. politicians in the United States just said she's going to break up an American company so that they can't criticize her anymore. Of course, fight, guys, fight. there was also urine gate this week. A back and forth over whether delivery drivers resort to peeing in bottles because of strict demands on the job. Now, the ballots will begin to be counted on Tuesday we're unlikely to get a result for at least a few days, but whatever the outcome, it is likely to be disputed, setting up this labor battle to continue for weeks and months ahead. Really, guys, back to you. I mean, it, it's interesting how much political support that the unionization effort has gotten, even from some unlikely Republicans, but clearly Sanders going into Alabama. What sort of chain reaction is Amazon prepared for? 
what they're prepared for, um, I think that's what they're doing right now is sort of gearing up with um, this. Urine gate. Oh my gosh. What, what is, is there just like, is there just this uh, li like lack of news that we got to talk about urine gate? I don't get it. Now I'm going to pull up uh, news here. Uh, give me a second. I'll log in. But geez, folks, like that tells you, in my opinion, this goes to tell you this whole market sell off is, and I've been saying it for a, for a while now, but it's just painful to keep saying it uh, because the market's been rough the last bit here. But to me, this whole market sell off is just a bunch of Fugazi driven by hedge fundies who are like, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to appear like I was wrong. I'd, I'd rather, rather than concentrate into high conviction stocks, I'd rather just have a little bit of everything. So I protect my clients in all directions. Okay. If you want to offer them lower long-term returns, sure. Go ahead. I think that's uh that's a lot of uh, what's, what's going on. I don't know. My take. And you know, I mean, like for me, some of these deals that we're seeing on the market right now, how, how could you pass these up? I mean, to me, it's just like, uh, you know, just, no, no, that's definitely the wrong one uh mm, darn darn uh for me it's all aboard yeah that's better okay i'll take that one it wasn't what i was going for but it's fine <laughs> uh yeah i don't know maybe i'm crazy okay see here they're talking about this rotation over here too and that's the thing is at some point this gets overplayed and we rotate back again like we saw in the middle of this month oh. Oh. Um, outperforming expensive they're very correlated they've both worked really well over the last couple of weeks um, in months, you know, and, and it continues to happen. And, and we even went a step further this week and looked at some of these factor moves within small caps themselves. And we basically found, um, you know, that they mirror large caps where cheaper small stocks beat more expensive small stocks, where we had small of the small beat large um, small caps. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a risk on move. It's a, a continued to value and size rotation. And that continues to be true within the small cap space. Chris Kane, breaking out so well. I think I see All alcohol on his, behind his shoulder. Do you see that? Uh, a tequila. <laughs> oh, tequila an, an Friday. Tequila at that. There you that go. is a nice tequila. Yeah. See, I, uh, what, what did I say? They, they're so bored. They're so bored because there's no news. They're taking. They're talking about CNBC is talking about pee in a bottle. Bloomberg is talking about uh, a tequila on somebody's shelf. Like, there's nothing. There's, there's nothing to justify this bullcrap. Nothing. In fact, let me repeat myself. Hold on. I don't know how to do this. I'm trying, I'm trying to work. I'm trying to work on this. I think it'd be cool. We got to figure it out, though. Hold on. We got to figure this out. Okay. Hello? Okay. I think you can hear me. Wait for it. There is no news. There is no news. There is no news. This is bullcrap. There is no news. This is bullcrap. There is no news. This is bullcrap. Is... See, now I could just play that. So in case you're wondering what's going on, here's the answer. This is bullcrap. There is no news. This is bullcrap. See, I got it taken care of for y'all. I got I got this taken care of, okay? I could just go make a cup of coffee and I could I could just hide myself and just uh, this is bullcrap. There is no news. <laughs> you gotta work on that. Uh but anywho, uh, uh what is this? Retail army retreat? What is this crap? Things he had mentioned was he really thinks people are going to be spending money on weddings, on fancy clothes, Ooh. on uh, on travel, on getting a plane, an unstoppable desire to really get out of the same four walls is what he said. And he's got a pretty good view into where people are spending some of their money. We also know that people are saving money. So, you yes. know, this is interesting, Taylor, when we're waiting for an IPO. The saving like, money thing, by the way, really, really bullish about people spending a ton of it. <laughs> which is particularly why this interest being a little lower is um, questionable. Talk to us about what had been the key fad of 2020, still into 2021, which is SPACs. And I mean, I, we were all talking at nauseum about WeWork a couple of years ago, if not but a year ago. Is anybody actually going to buy the WeWork IPO or SPAC? By the back door, we get a SPAC of WeWork. 
is the desire there to get into these sorts of com companies right now? Yeah, listen, there's certainly, certainly is still a desire. There's certainly still a desire to raise SPACs. The people who are raising money for these SPACs still are privy to a pretty hefty payout, right? That 20% promote. So the desire is still there. The desire to do the deals are certainly still there because they need to get those deals done pretty quickly. The SEC taking a look at these SPACs make it a little more complicated moving forward. You know, what will they actually be looking at is quite unclear. Uh, there's also investment banks that are getting more discerning about either the clients they're taking on or the types of deals they're doing. Investment banks getting more discerning? Oh my gosh. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's so many attendees to be... I think they're just upset because it's like, oh, the SPACs. The SPACs are selling off. Let's not do any more SPACs. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. I know Caroline and I have such a keen focus on that. I want to talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum and whatever, you name it, because those are open on the weekend. So on Friday, when the equity markets close, we can yep. gauge some of the retail trading by taking a look. And we're higher, what, 54,000 on, on Bitcoin? I mean, we're off the highs, but it is still a vertical line up. It's a vertical line up. Listen, you know, there's people who bet on Bitcoin. They bet on it for the long term. You know, is it worth 100,000 at the end of the year? Is it what is it worth when this year ends? Not what is it worth tomorrow? Is there going to be any big news? Right? I think that. Oh, I can answer that. This is bullcrap. There is no news. This is bullcrap. There is no news. People are getting back to work at a faster pace. People will be making more decisions on whether they're spending that treasury money on Bitcoin, Taylor, right? But it might be a bit of a slow week ahead of us. Well, never a slow week when we have Shinali Basic. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, honestly, like, uh, thank you for saying that. I didn't think that was very vertical either. I thought that was pretty, uh, you know, just like we, we, we had we had some movement there, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily call that vertical. Uh, so that's just straight Bloomberg Live TV here. Let's go to the sticks and just see how things are progressing uh, in the after hours. And uh, Salesforce Digital First Push Sales Cloud 360. Okay, some new software, eh? Salesforce's digital first focus unveils revamped sales cloud. Huh. Hold on a sec. On uh, competitors. We think that, you know, the digitization of the economy that was really accelerated by COVID is really an opportunity for companies to lean in to transforming themselves. You know, if you were to ask any CEO around the world, could you do run your business from home for a year? Every one of them would have laughed at you, and we just did it. We just proved to ourselves we could. And now going back, we have this once-in-a-generation opportunity to reimagine our cultures, uh, reimagine our operating expenses, just reimagine our businesses as a whole. And you know, partnerships with Snowflake, we're recognizing that in a digital economy, data is key to driving insights and helping get back to growth. Uh, Yo, get some Palantir up in here really recognizing that this flexible work model is here to stay. And so a lot of our investments, our partnerships, our acquisition strategy, our organic innovation strategy, we really want to be the platform for growth for every company coming out of this pandemic. And that's what's driving our strategy. You know, there, uh, uh, Mark Benioff, the uh, CEO of uh, Salesforce, he was really, he's been saying this for, for months, just, and, and I mean, some of us have been talking about this for, for over a year. Uh, but Mark Minioff really doubled down on this a few months ago where he's like, look, you know, we're, we really like this transition. We're able to cut our costs. Yeah. We want to get people back into the office, but I mean, we're, we're doing great working from home. It's pretty incredible. Uh, I mean, and it certainly is a, a cost reducer. I mean, I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, we were talking about how all these job layoffs were happening and uh, there was a lot of talk uh, specifically on this channel where I would, I would cite research and go, I think what's going to happen is these companies are going to realize they can work very productively with less people and it's going to be tough. There are going to be a lot of people who just don't get rehired back. Maybe the companies pick and choose, you know, some people uh, they, they really like that they hire back, but then, then a lot of people end up, uh, end up getting screwed. Uh, I don't know. It's just a thought that I have, but uh, it's, it's uh it's disappointing. It's it's a rough environment. So uh, in the after hours here, let's uh, see what's moving here in the after hours. So looks like Blink, Dave and Buster's, GoPro, DocuSign down, a Roblox down to seventy. But big buys. I mean, big move. Price action came into Roblox uh, today. 
Let's go to the uh, the minute chart here. So yeah, a lot of very consistent growth today at Roblox. Really bailing it out of that that uh, sixty five uh, price range where it was briefly. We do have Tesla bobbing up around that six twenty range. Uh, Walt Disney, Square, Zoom. What else? Uh, Lordstown. Oh, let's see here. Uh, oh, Arc. Look at that. Arc FinTech is actually up one percent here in the after hours. Yeah, along with the cannabis ETF. What else is up here? Oh, CRISPR's up 3%. Oh, 2, 1%. <laughs> Just updated. A good rally, though, there on CRISPR in the after hours. Darn. Maybe I should have bought this one. <laughs> now, obviously, you can't judge these super short term. Otherwise, you'll go crazy. But hey, CRISPR is a company I'm bullish on. Uh, it's just going to be uh, it's gonna be interesting how all the gene editing plays out. Uh, what's more interesting, though, is some of the uh, sweet tendies that hopefully we'll see next week when this market realizes that we hit another bottom and it's time to complete the W-shaped recovery and uh, show us the W. See, we're still building the W right here. Let's go to Tesla for a sec. So we have our drawing of the W here somewhere, I think. Uh, is it still here? Uh, nope, I don't really see it anymore. Oh, wait, that's probably because we have to go to the day chart. There's our W. Okay, so so here's the down, nice up, down, not as low, not as low. We got to 599, that's pretty close. I mean, what's next here to me, it looks like, uh, you know, straight up. So how about 868 in three weeks, please? And then we can complete the, uh, the W here. So uh, that, that would be interesting. <laughs> that would be awesome if we could make that happen. So we'll see because I've pretty much pretty much spent. I mean, I, I still have a, a little bit that I'm willing to spend if we get some more red next week, like the break glass fund. That's it. We're going YOLO here. I, I haven't gone YOLO crazy yet. I did buy a bunch of stuff today, which we talked about in the uh, in the course. But uh, wow. Woo. It's been, it's been it's been crazy times. Okay, so uh, what else here? Let's uh ooh Baidu ooh uh, this is on the day here the day chart for Baidu. This is a Chinese stock's getting hurt today. Uh, One seventy four at a low, really taking you back to somewhere around what is this uh, December pricing for Baidu. Yeah, we're seeing that a lot with a lot of stocks. Just really just last four months of nothing. Draw. Draw a down. Okay, let's let's try this. Let's let's try what uh, Mo Polk Mo Polk has to say about Tesla. So Mo Polk uh, Mo Polk says draw a downtrend line from draw a trend line down from the downturn in Feb slash early March and see where that bottom bounced off. Oh, you're talking about a horizontal? No, yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, no. I I know. So my argument has been that uh, we're not going to hit those levels again because that was peak fear time. And so I'm pulling that back up about 10%. Uh, and that's why I, just my argument, I don't believe, like I said, like, okay, we're kind of used to the bumpy road right now, right? Like the first time we hit the bumpy road, it's like, oh, crap. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just, remember, there is no news. This is bull there crap. is no news. This is bull there crap. There is no news. We, we know this. Anyway. <laughs> All right, let's hop into this. Shares of online secondhand clothes retailer ThreadUp taking off after going public today. We will hear from the company's CEO next. Plus, Suez standstill. Find out the astonishing amount of money in trade that is currently being halted because of the cargo ship stuck in the Suez Canal. We've got the oh. latest for you on this incredible story next. That would be interesting because it's not just that ship. It's all the other ships. Yeah, that's where you go. Oh, ship. Bad jokes. It's bad. Bad jokes. Biden focuses on North Korea over China. I don't get Fox business sometimes. Just don't. Maybe one day I will. Uh, okay, let's see here. What's the news over here? In the wash of this, and they're really in a bind. As you mentioned, companies like H&M, Nike, Adidas, and so on are caught in this firestorm of demands now on social media in China, which is calling for bans because they raised concerns about reports of forced labor in Xinjiang. You saw see, that's just what you need in this kind of market, 
is you get a crap market like this and then you get like a trade war and, and and China trying to change things up and Biden trying to change things up. That's exactly what you need. You know what? We just need more more disaster. We need more of this and more of this and uh, more of uh, where is it? This. The House of Pain. Yeah, and then the bear. I don't really like that bear one. They could have done better on the bear one. That would have been a lot better. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Mm, just n not a big fan of that one. All right, let's keep going here. What's so just like say? overall countries, companies face those difficult decisions about how they respond and deal with China. As you mentioned, Australia too has been sticking its neck out and on China in various ways and finding itself punished. So it's finding that balance between calling out what they see as, as, as some of China's behaviour on human rights, but not getting too caught in the wash when it comes to their own companies and their businesses and then for countries, their own trade. Bloomberg's Rosalind Matheson, thank you for joining us, really breaking that down. Caroline, those, I mean, it's been a long week, but if we can believe it, those comments were just over 24 hours ago that we were I know. talking about that press conference and um, getting some more clarity in the turnaround in Nike today as the analysts were saying, not just yet, hold on, maybe oversold. So certainly interesting. <laughs> what are we doing on What'd You Miss? What are you doing? And what'd you miss? What a Joe, what Joe's coming on and we're talking, well, all the things that went kind of crazy on the week because, I mean, yes, it was the relationship with China, but also NFTs. We haven't started, non-fungible <laughs> oh, token going forget? wild. Did you hear about the non-fungible token, like of a story, a journalist story about NFTs became an NFT, money went to charity? Yes, the New York Times. I put this on my Instagram yesterday, which if you don't have me on Instagram yet, follow me on Twitter, Instagram. But so the New York Times, let me see if I can pull this up. The New York Times yesterday, and it's so crazy because I was, I had the paper, I don't have it here, but I had the paper and uh, I'm like, what? They're, they made a story about how they were going to sell that story as an NFT. New York Times NFT story. And uh, yeah, here it is. Buy this NFT on blockchain. Right here. And uh, the minimum bid was half an ether. So I read the story and I'm like, okay, cool. Like, it's a cool story, whatever. They talk about, you know, these collectibles and other things that have sold, blah, 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 whatever. Then they talked about how they were going to sell this NFT where you get the token itself, a unique digital collectible that corresponds to an image of this column in a PNG format. Our lawyers want me to note that the NFT does not include the copyright to the article or any reproduction or uh, syndication rights. Uh, you'll also be featured in a follow-up article on the sale, along with your name, affiliation, and a family family-friendly image of your choice. And as a bonus perk, the host of the daily will send you a short, personalized voice memo congratulating you on your purchase. Anyway, so the minimum bid for this NFT was uh, like half a uh, half an ether. The thing ended up selling, folks, for five hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. Look at that. Sold for 350 Ether. Oh, it went up, actually. Uh, it, it sold for, uh, oh, maybe because the uh, the price of Ether has changed. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. It's Okay, so effectively sold for $586,000. That's crazy. That is crazy. Um, yeah, for an article about NFTs. Now, sometimes I just wonder if, like, these folks are just trying to get the advertising. Like, but what's 3F music? I, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Like, who's this? D. Roy Yang. Like, why? Why, dude? I, I want to know what what possessed you to offer 200 and something thousand dollars. Like, I just want to know. I think it was, he was 250. And then this person, 3F music. Like, Farzin, where did you get all this? Where'd you get all these dollar hollas? Okay, so a lot of this stuff just sold for one, two ether or whatever. I mean, I oh wow, look at the the geometric shapes. I don't get it. Oh, I'm gonna hang this in the hall. Like I feel like this is like this is like a different world. I was telling Lauren what we should do is we should take all the popular NFTs that uh, that have sold, it like the really popular ones, and just like put them in our hallway on on like a bunch of iPads. And it's like, look, it's our NFT menagerie. 
And then, then we get to enjoy the art too. And then if somebody, you know, says, oh, did you actually buy that? We could just say, you can look it up it's on the blockchain and you'll see. The answer will be no. But maybe I just don't get it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Wow. <sighs> okay. Um, I don't get it because I can't produce hodl or hodl. Everybody, okay, that's like potato or potato, okay? Uh, <laughs> those those things don't don't correlate. Okay, all right. What else is going on in the after hours here? Uh, well, not not much. Not much here on the neg. Uh, no, not much either going on over here in the pause. Pretty muted. Pretty muted here in the after hours. No surprise. Jif or gif, right? Yeah, or gif or jif. Ah, it depends, you know, people, are, what is it, uh, G's that sound like a J, General, Germany, right? Oh, but then is it GIF? I don't know. Or is it GIF? Because it's uh, like graphics. <laughs> it's such a mess. <laughs> I think we all get get it. But anyway, uh, so Square flat, yeah, flat here in the after hours. Really, uh, just no, no real movement here. Let's look at just the news section here uh on this let's just go to top so top news here things keep getting worse for hedge funds as long bets sour wall street bonuses rose 10 percent in 2020 democrats proposed repeal of sec rule kirby show okay biden invites virtual class yang okay mm, no 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 i mean none of there's no news nothing it's it's so boring what is this? Where, where was the the hedgy one? Uh, where was the hedge for hedgy? Here we, here we go. Things just keep getting worse at, for hedge funds as long bets sour. After getting burned during January's retail squeeze for GameStop, now hedge funds are feeling the pain on the long side as well. A basket of the 50 most popular stocks has fallen this month, with a group of 50 most crowded shorts gained, dealing a double blow to performance. Ouch. Hedgies. Poor hedgies. Uh, and then there was another here. I think the market's live here. Look at this. This one here. Inflation fears may worsen. Wait, where's the inflation one? I want to see the inflation topic. Where was it? Where was it? I don't see it. Uh, I thought I saw something about inflation fears. But now I don't see it. Oh, here we go, here we go. Stuck ship may fan food inflation worries further. Oh, food inflation. Oh, if the blockage persists and spreads more spreads to more agricultural commodities, the market could be in for more ripples. Ooh. All right, let's listen to this. Viacom CBS. I'm sure you've seen the action in that, that name this week. It closed down 27% today, down 50% for the week. What's your view on that one? Well... I followed it. I, you know, the, the family that owns the stock has not been user friendly. They overpaid the people who ran both Viacom and CBS in the past. I mean, CBS is a cash flow generator. It doesn't have a lot of top line growth. Um, and let's be frank, the Viacom or the Paramount you know, type of streaming service is not exactly Disney. I wouldn't run out to buy it. We've owned Disney forever. It's very expensive here, but Disney is definitely the play if you want to own streaming with assets and production. So I, I'm not saying you should buy Disney at the top here, but Disney's a much better company and a better franchise. Scott Black, great to hear from you as always. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Um, L Brands uh, finishing the day up more than 3% today. We'll tell you what's driving some surprising optimism behind this retailer ahead. Plus, we'll discuss whether Wall Street's heading for tax hike trouble when President Biden unveils his economic plan next week. Take a look at this. Hi. I saw somebody comment this. Here's somebody who's unboxing a uh, an NFT. Like they they, uh, it's almost like it's a physical here. Beeple, nice little box. Look at this. They had to make it physical. I, I wonder how much this person spent on this. Bought a Beeple NFT. It, this is I mean that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, a certificate of authenticity. A hair sample. What is this? It's like they're trying to make the digital physical to give it value. Okay. Uh, very interesting. I promise it's okay. This is very, 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 very odd. 
so uh th there you go so here's the artwork well this is an ipad you gotta plug it in here you go oh wow look artwork oh wow unboxing yay oh wow i kind of wonder how much that sold for beeple bull run artist notes hashtag hodl beeple Beeple bull. Oh, wait, maybe I could just scan that. Can we just scan that? That'd be cool. All right. Let's try to figure this out. <laughs> so I just, uh, let's see. Okay. Open bitly. Okay. Well, that worked. Beeple. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. So here, I'll put, the, I'll put this up on screen uh, in terms of what we see. So give me a sec here. So I scanned this QR code. And we get this right here. I could subscribe. Day number 4951, Beeple Collect. Look at that. Date created, November 18th. Minted date, November 19th. Download, view on blockchain. You could download the file. Owner message, question mark, question mark. Okay. Bizarre. <laughs> Let's look, view on blockchain. Let's see if this, this should show us what it sold for, right? So, offers, I got to see this. Offer price, okay, so these are just offers, but we don't know what the thing sold for. Trading history, was this the trading history? 1.5, no. Price history, no data. I don't know. I don't know how much it sold for. It just, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to understand, 10K, was it 10K? Somebody says 10K whatever the point is like i mean i guess if that makes people happy then do it but uh yeah and i mean okay it's on your shelf now and it's cool i mean they did a really nice like marketing set here i have to say the marketing i mean that's really really nice but um maybe i just don't get it still <laughs> 10k is just a guess oh okay yeah yeah i i don't know Oh, we can, uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, there's our NFT talk for the day. Oh, okay. we we'll go over here and listen to Sarah. Patterns partially from stimulus leading to a boost in sales. L Brands is up more than 65% in 2021. It's been a great call for analyst Simeon Siegel of BMO, who recommended it, Wilfred, as his top pick. Very nice. Way uh, before the move yeah. we've seen. Yeah. Very nice call. Cool. From Simeon. Um, another big retail winner today is uh, Thread up uh, after the company launched its IPO. Courtney Reagan's got that story for us. Hey, Court. Let's hear about Thread. Hi, Will. So ThreadUp is another player in the online retail resale business that is now a public company. While it's not profitable and warns in its S1 it may not hit or maintain profitability, the online consignment retailer CEO James Reinhardt said on CBC Today, internal discussions is the goal is to be the Amazon of resale. While many people will go out and I expect that they will buy new clothes, I think the value proposition of used uh, remains very, very strong, you know, not, not only this year, but, you know, in the next few years. And so we feel very I mean, I think this is like personally, I mean, this is just a suspicion that I have. Uh, and I, I would want to verify this with actual data. But uh, suspicion I have is like, you know, Dollar General and stuff, they did really well when the pandemic started as people were saving money. Uh, you know. Do people potentially have, or, or are they still going to be buying used as we open up? It's just a question. Maybe, maybe, maybe the interest in used clothes has uh, has spiked because people are like, hey, maybe I don't need to spend as much money on clothing as I thought. I don't know. I don't know. We shall see. All right, let's see what Larry Larry's got for us. Larry, seriously, you going to give us a Generac ad? Unbelievable. Levinson, he is the author of the book, the great book, The Box, How the Shipping Container Made the World Smaller and the World Economy Bigger, great expert on all this stuff. So, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. You know, something that you've talked a lot is um, the logistical challenge of gigantic ships. And this, uh, ship Yeah, okay, they're huge and they get stuck. I got it. Well, folks, I mean, I have to say, I, I think it, with, with such a slow news day, you know, like we had here, news. This is bullcrap. There is no news. This is bullcrap. Yeah. Anyway, uh, a little silly mix. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say, hey, I think uh, uh, 
I think that's probably a good way to end it. So uh, make sure to use that coupon code. It expires tonight. HODL, HODL or HODL, however you want to say it. Uh, the code works just the same. Just make sure you spell it right. It's H-O-D-L. It's 38% off. Lifetime access to the content and the future content of the course. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it, the bonus of having the private live streams where the market is open. Buy, sell alerts in the Stocks and Psychology Group. But, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all there. And uh, in the meantime, hey, have a wonderful day. <laughs> all right, folks. We'll see you. Bye.